What's up guys? We're here today and we want to share with you some really exciting news. It's a new chapter and we couldn't wait to share it with you. We're actually buying a house and uh, it's a big step in the next process of obviously our lives, but we know we help so many of you guys buy houses and we decided, you know what, it's time for us to buy another house um, and start building some passive, um, passive cash flow for us in investment in real estate. So we'll share every single step of the way with you so you know from beginning to end what to expect during the home buying process. And we want to be completely transparent with every step of the process from the pre-approval to the inspection all the way to the closing table so you guys see every step of the way what happens from contract to close. So we first wanted to kind of go over why we're looking to buy a house today. We all know that the news is saying how everything is crazy and that you know, there's a housing bubble, interest rates are so high, um, could have potential war with Russia. Uh, so why would you want to buy a house today in today's world? So um, Maya, why would you want to buy a house? Well, I really love St. Augustine. And even though we have a house here already, I wanted to invest in an area that's growing. And that's really why I wanted to get a second property. What about you? I think a lot of it is something that we've always talked about in uh, our relationship is building passive income. You know, we don't have kids yet, but like when we do, it would be nice that you could just kind of take off work and not have to worry about, you know, bills if we have some, some good cash flow coming in. Of course, we love the town, you know, that's a big part of it, but if we lived anywhere, this would be something that we'd be looking to do, right? I mean, we, we want to build passive income so that we don't have to work every single day, right? Just like you guys, right? You don't, no one wants to work every single day. We want to see what we can do and live our life and, and have fun with our family and friends. Um, so this is just kind of the first step in that journey. Uh, we also really, really love West Augustine and what's going on down here. I mean, you go to yoga down here. Yeah, you know, there's and, really great restaurants. There's the yoga studio that I go to every week. So it was definitely a part of town that I wanted to live in. And that's why we, uh, it was kind of on top of our list of places to check out. So we started this journey a couple months ago. You know, we're, we're pretty well versed in what you need in terms of uh, buying power for a home here in the area and credit qualifications and all of that. Um, but we, we did it a little bit differently because Maya is actually on the house that we live in currently, right? Yeah. So I'm not, you know, technically I'm married to her, so I'm all good, but I'm technically <laughs> not on that house, right? He's not so, on the loan. Yeah, I'm not on the loan. Um, but we decided that we would do the same thing essentially in this instance. So everything is technically under my name um, for the, the loan and the house will be under both of our names, right? So just using my income to qualify just for this purchase. We didn't include me on the loan because I'm already associated with debt to a previous house and we wanted to make sure that our buying power would be strong enough so that we could actually afford a house that we really liked in an area that we wanted to be in. Yeah, so we just wanted to use one of our incomes. Uh, so we just used my income and uh, getting started throughout the pre-approval process, we always tell people like, hey, that's like the first thing you need to do. And for whatever reason, people don't want to do that. And I think it's because they almost have to get undressed, so to speak, in front of a lender, you know, and kind of show them all their finances and so that they can get qualified properly, right? And like how many people would just put that off towards the end? Yeah, because it's, it's showing some vulnerability, right? Showing your debt, showing your credit score, and hey, maybe it's something that you're still continuously working on and it's not where you want it to be, but that was the step that we had to take to kind of, hey, what's our buying power? What could we afford? What are we willing to spend? We just needed to know that up front so we could do some accurate house shopping. Yeah. And to be 100% transparent with you, like if we were using, you know, it would probably have been a better idea for us financially to put everything in my name on the house we currently own because Maya has better credit than I do, <laughs> you know? And uh, that's just uh, from a series of mistakes when I was younger, but I just don't have the strongest credit as she does. She's like, she's got like an 860, you know? Like I'm not competing, so. Um, but we, we know what you need to have in order to get qualified. We got that information to the lender. And for me as a, I'm not a W-2 employee, I'm a 1099 independent contractor. So what a lender needs is two years of proven income from my business, right? For me to be able to qualify. They take that total income as an average. Um, and then of course you have to have good credit as well to qualify. Now most lenders, uh, they're, they're looking for around a 640 credit score, but I've seen some that will operate as low as a 580 credit score. We gave our lender a call and we said, hey, this is our, 
our goal for this year is something, you know, we want to qual get qualified to purchase an investment property. And, and that's when we said, hey, it's probably better that you pull the income and information from one of us instead of me, who already has the debt. And so that's what we did. And that's how we figured out what we could afford. Yeah, and, and to clean up my credit score a little bit, the lender coached me like, hey, you should pay off X, X, and X. And, and one, that helps my, my income to debt ratio, but it also helped my credit score a little bit too, which is in turn gonna help me uh, with my interest rate down the, uh, down the road when we do finally get the house under contract. Another thing that we did actually to boost up your credit a little bit was to add you to two of my oldest cards, because mm -hmm. I do have older credit and it's been pretty good. So that was another way to kind of boost up his credit score. Yeah, and that's something that we've used in the past with other buyers too. Uh, for instance, I had someone who, who made $200,000 a year, but they literally had no credit score. They didn't have a credit score at all. What he ended up doing is have his brother add him to one of his older cards that he has good credit history on, and that automatically that, that buyer inherited his brother's credit history just based off of that, so he was then able to get a loan. Yep. So we are taking the same strategies that we're coaching you guys through uh, to make it a better situation for us on our purchase as well. So the pre-approval is the first step that most people need to take initially, and I think um, a lot of people like to put it off, but when you do this months ahead of time, yeah, they're going to pull your credit, but they're also going to be able to coach you on what you need to do to be in a better financial situation in order to purchase a house. You know, sometimes that takes three to six months, but that's okay if it's going to ultimately put you in a better situation when you're under contract and you're making a monthly mortgage payment for 30 years. So. It's a little work up front, but it helps in the long game. 100%. Right? Yeah. It does. And uh, a lot of people are just hesitant to it because you do have to get, you know, a little uncomfortable with yourself and give someone access to your financial information so that they can kind of help you, guide you along. But the people we work with, you know, they're not, they're not making fun of you or, or, or talking shit about you behind your back no in your credit situation. <laughs> like we've all been in a situation that's not as favorable, right? And we've all worked ourselves out of that. So I think that's a, a big portion of that. The one thing that did happen though along the pre-approval process is we started this in the beginning of the year, but like I said, I'm an independent contractor, a 1099 employee. They need to have two years of your income documented. So for me personally, they had to wait until my 2022 taxes were completely finished. Uh, so we had to wait until that was filed, all the taxes were paid, all that kind of good stuff until we could actually get that paper in hand that says, hey, we're ready to go, we're, we're serious buyers today. Um, which was a hurdle because uh, paying taxes is not fun. That's a good chunk of change that went out of the account. Once we had that letter in hand, we decided, and we talked about it, what kind of investment this next property was gonna be. Mm -hmm. And we discussed and agreed that we would move into this property for a couple years, but ultimately it would be an Airbnb for us which required us to do a little bit of research on the type of neighborhoods we wanted, the type of property we wanted, and the zoning of said property so that it would be zoned appropriately so we could have that Airbnb. So essentially our, our buy box for a house that we were looking for is that it had to be under $350,000. Uh, not that we couldn't qualify for more, we just wanted to be super comfortable in our payment. Um, had to have at least two bedrooms had to be in either West Augustine or St. Augustine South, and then also had to be RS3 zoning or anything outside of RS1 and RS2 zoning so that we would be able to rent it out on the nightly if we did decide to move to another place. So those exactly. all factored into the equation of where we started looking, which it, for the most part was West Augustine and St. Augustine South. Because we knew how much we wanted to spend and because we're really familiar with the market here in St. Augustine, we knew that within that price point, we would essentially fall into two neighborhoods, West Augustine and St. Augustine South. So that's really where we started to look. And I, I think like we looked at it as an investment, but we also looked at it in terms of like our lifestyle and what we like. And both of those neighborhoods have something that can attribute something to our lifestyle. So here in West Augustine, we're right off of West King Street right now, but you have restaurants and bars that are starting to pop up all through here on West King. Um, your access to downtown, super close. You can either walk or ride your bike there, take an Uber there in a couple minutes. Um, and the same thing with St. Augustine South, where you don't have that same thing that West Augustine has, but St. Augustine South, you have four miles of intercoastal access right in the neighborhood there. You have two boat ramps. So if you wanna go out in the kayak, you wanna go fishing, you have access to it right there. You wanna walk your dog around the intercoastal, you can definitely do that there. And, and that's also part of a big reason of why we wanted to 
buy a house and, and get a yard, right? You we know? wanted it for our dog. We yeah. wanted him to have the space to run around and play outside. So that was another thing that was kind of a must have for us when looking for properties. Yeah, we're the typical millennials who don't have kids, right? Uh, dual income, no kids. And we're, obsessed with our dog. We're obsessed with our dog <laughs> and we want to make sure that he has a great space to run around and have fun. Yeah. And we're probably going to get another dog, right? That's, yeah. Uh, that's the goal. So we already decided where we want to live between West Augustine and St. Augustine South. And we got pre-approved with an FHA loan up to $400,000. Now, we didn't have to go FHA. We wanted to go FHA. And there's for a number of reasons. Uh, they allow you to put 3.5% down. So you don't have to put as much down as you would for a conventional loan. A lot of times you're going to see 5%, 10%, 20% for your conventional loan. And we didn't want to do that. The next biggest thing is that we're able to get 6% in seller's concessions. Uh, so that means 6% of your purchase price is able to be contributed from the seller's net to my closing costs, rate buy downs, and prepaids. If the seller's okay with that. If the seller's okay yeah. with that, right? But that's something that we definitely wanted through this process because we want to keep more cash in our pocket because the world is crazy. Why not keep more cash in your pocket and stay more liquid? So that was another big reason, being able to get that 6% in closing costs, prepaids, and rate buy down. And then also FHA goes along with the investment vehicle that we want. We talked about buying multiple investment properties over years and years and years so that we build passive income. And with FHA, you can buy a house, live in it for a year, and then you can rent it out. And then you can buy another house, live in it for a year, rent it out, and do the same thing, rinse and repeat over and over and over with again. With that FHA loan. So. so the biggest benefit to that to us is that we put less money down, so less money out of our bank account. The seller contributes money to our closing costs, so that means less money out of our pocket, and then we get to do it again and again and again for however many times we like until we feel we have enough passive income to be comfortable. So then we went shopping, which is my favorite part. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't my favorite part because we, <laughs> we lost a couple offers um, on some houses that we really, really liked and we, we had vision for, and I think that's the hardest that's the hardest pill to swallow when going through this is where you can envision yourself living in a house, you envision your family coming over, maybe your kids or your dogs running in the yard, and then you lose it, right? And that happened to us four times throughout this entire process, all on homes that fit our bill 100% and would have been a place that we could have really enjoyed for several years. We were open to putting in some sweat equity and finding a fixer upper, and we were open to something that you know didn't really need much work but we had our heart broken a couple of times and we tell buyers all the time, don't fall in love with the house, but we did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a couple of the houses that we put offers in. We're gonna tell you the type of offers we put in and why we think we lost those offers compared to everyone else that actually won. All right, so we took a drive down to St. Augustine South just so we can kind of show you the neighborhood that we were in, also the street. We're right off of Argonaut right now. We offered on 222 Argonaut, which was listed at $265,000. Now, this was the first offer that we put in, and we lost this offer to a cash offer, but I think we would have lost it either way. But we put in an offer of $230,000 with $13,800 in closing costs, that 6% seller assist that we were talking about. Now, maybe that doesn't seem like it was a great idea, but that was our first offer and uh, we lost the cash, right? So we know. really know why now. So we lost to cash. We were a financing offer, but the house needed a complete gut. We knew walking in that we would have to put a lot of sweat equity into this project. I mean, it was a two bedroom, one bath, yep. if I remember correctly, but it needed complete renovation. It had an awesome deck in the back. Everything needed to be redone. And from the seller's perspective, I understand why they took cash. I mean, cash didn't really need any appraisal or inspection. We needed both. And that was probably going to be more work, more hassle for them. So. It also helps that they offered thirty thousand dollars more than us, that but too. you know that that does help. Um, but in terms of the ease for the seller, you know, if you're trying to sell your house, the home was on the market for all of like two or three days. It wasn't on the market very long. Uh, they're going to go with the cash all day long versus us, who obviously, when it comes down to closing the loan, we need more cash from the seller yeah. to be able to do that. So for them, it was an easy decision. For us, it was heartbreak. This house really checked 
all of the boxes. It was in the price point. It was a two bed. It was a bigger two bed. So it was also zoned for Airbnb. We thought long, um, in the long run, we thought it would be a really great investment. We could visualize all the things we wanted to change, what walls we were going to knock down, what carpet we were going to pull up. So it was really heartbreaking to lose it. Yeah. But everything happens for a reason. So it wasn't meant to be, and we moved on to the next one. For sure. And it would have been a massive project for us to undertake, you know, just obviously working full time and then having to do that really at a full time, whereas like you needed to renovate the entire house. You know, we're talking exterior siding, you're talking the roof, you're talking the interior, the kitchen, the bathrooms, everything needed to be done. And could we have done it? Yes, but it would have been a much bigger project. So that's really, you know, factoring in, yeah, it sold for 260, but for us and what we wanted to do, it wouldn't have made sense at that price. We're right out here in front of 22 Pearl, which is another offer that we lost in our journey of buying a home here in West Augustine. Now we lost that offer on 222 Argonaut, which was in St. Augustine South. And then we really decided, we, we tried to hone our focus of where we wanted to be. And we ultimately came to the conclusion that West Augustine was gonna be the place for us. The main reasons for that is because of the price point, also because of all the development in the area. So right in front of us here, they actually have new construction that's right across from Pearl. Uh, they have a train station coming with a parking lot that's gonna be right at the intersection of US 1 and West King Street. That hasn't been fully approved yet, but I believe that is gonna get pushed crossed. through. Fingers crossed, especially <laughs> for us. Uh, and three, this one had a fenced in yard. So for our dog, we can just let him out, go hang out in the sun, and he can bake like a potato. It was perfect, yeah. And ultimately, we ended up offering above asking price so that we could get those sellers concessions. So it was listed for 329, we offered 340 and asking for 6% in concessions. Ultimately found out the seller did not want to give those concessions. So we became a backup offer and they did accept another offer, which was really heartbreaking because again, we visualized ourselves in this house. But once we lost it, we realized, okay, we're gonna have to look for some other options. As we've moved through this process, we've gotten more and more realistic and honing in our offer in terms of what's going to be the best offer. Um, now, that's something that we coach a lot of our buyers on and it's, it's not the easiest conversation. We were getting our ass kicked, right? We lost four offers in a row, so we had to make some changes to what we were doing in order to get an accepted contract. So we're in West Augustine, right off of West King Street. After losing four offers, we got under contract on this cutie right behind me. We initially saw the house it was a new construction it had just hit the market at 315 we immediately came to see it immediately put in an offer at 325 asking for fifteen thousand dollars in closing costs now the seller was not trying to give any concessions they were not keen on our offer so they said you know what we're going to wait we're not going to accept they ended up coming back to us about a week week and a half later and said let's make something happen so we negotiated. We ended up going up in purchase price to three thirty dollars and asking for almost $20,000 in closing cost assistance, and they agreed. They agreed. So they agreed. That was exactly what we wanted to hear. They got what they wanted. We got what we wanted. So we're under contract. So we're actually going to give you a full tour of this property on the next video that we do, and it's also going to cover the under contract process, everything from contract to the inspection, right? So that's going to be the emails you get from my transaction coordinator, the earnest money deposit, setting up the inspection and going to the inspection. We're trying to be as transparent as possible, guys. So catch us on the next video.